when a good man comes into your life and starts pursuing you, there's not going to be a whole lot you need to do to keep him. Rather, what really needs to happen is that you don't inadvertently do certain things that get in the way of his manhood. Because a good man isn't going to be coming to a woman so that he can find his masculine strength. Rather, he's going to already know who he is in God, and then he's going to want a woman in his life so that he has someone to express his masculine strength with because she has her feminine beauty, and together they can express the identities that God has given them. So you don't want to try to make him the man you think he's going to you he should be, but rather you want to allow him to be the man God has already made him to be. Again, because we're talking about good men here. And I'm going to give you four things to consider so you don't push good guys away. Number one, never tell a good guy what to do. Just ask him. How you express your needs to a good man will make all the difference. Many women have been hurt in previous relationships and then when they meet a good guy, they feel like they need to be assertive still to get what they want because men in their past were reluctant to love these women in the ways they wanted. But remember, we're talking about good guys now and a good guy is going to want to make you happy because otherwise he wouldn't be with you. If he didn't want to be with you, he wouldn't be with you. And so you don't need to be twisting his arm or being assertive and telling him what to do because the desire is already within him to want to make you happy. Therefore, all you really need to do is just ask a good guy rather than demand it. For example, don't say, I need you to help me move on Saturday. Instead, ask, would you be able to help me move on Saturday? Don't say, it would make me really happy if you would come to a family party with me. Instead, ask, I would love for you to come to a family party with me. Is there any chance you could do that for me? Don't say, you need to talk to me more. I need to know how you feel. Instead, ask, I really care about you and want to know how you're doing. Could you try to be more open with me about how you feel sometimes? It would help me a lot because I care so much about you. As you can see, I included expressing your feelings, but I avoided direct commands to the man. Rather, when it comes to wanting something from him, always phrase it in a question rather than a command. Because a command comes off as disrespectful and emasculating. Because you're taking away the choice that he wants to have to choose to love you rather than feeling like he has to do it. When you tell him what to do, it makes him feel like you don't think he could do the right thing if you just asked. But when you ask him a question, this implies that you do believe he has the answer himself. Telling him implies he lacks something good and discourages him from doing what you say. Asking him implies you believe he possesses the right stuff and it encourages him to do what you've asked. Number two, never rush a good guy to commit to you with your words. Rather, use your actions to show him that it's a good idea to commit to you. One of the most common issues that happen before marriage between men and women is the speed in which greater and greater commitment is offered. Of course, this doesn't always happen, but oftentimes the woman is ready for a commitment faster than the man is. The woman often tries to solve this problem by expressing her desires verbally. She does this because she wants the man to know how she feels. And if I was making this video for men to know how to avoid pushing a good woman away, I would tell them they need to be more verbal. But this video is for women to know how to avoid pushing a good man away. Therefore, we need to remember that men are not as feeling focused as women and are typically much more concerned with what makes sense. Men are very logical first. They have feelings. They probably have the same amount of feelings you have for them. It's all there, but they need their mind boxes to get checked first before they will release their heart. And that takes 
time. They need to see with their eyes that this relationship actually makes logical sense and fits into their life and is going in the right direction. The two are theologically consistent. They have the same life goals. It just makes sense to be together. And then the man will release his heart to go where it's probably wanted to go from the beginning, but he just needed more time to see it tangibly and logically. So rather than telling a man you want him to commit, you have to show him why he should commit. If you're flaky in your commitment and loyalty to him, playing all kinds of games, he's going to take longer to want to commit to you. But if he sees you adding value to his life, being loyal, and being the type of woman he would want to marry, then his logic will release his feelings and he will commit more to you with out you telling him to. Number three, never give a good guy an ultimatum. Rather, live your life and allow him to make the sacrifices that he wants to make. You do have to have standards for yourself and for the type of guy you want to end up with. But if a guy is not something you want him to be, it does you no good in telling him to change or else you are leaving him. Even if he does change because you've given him this ultimatum, it's not really gonna matter because even if he does it, he's eventually going to resent you for forcing him to do something that he wasn't prepared to do. Never say, if you don't propose to me in the next year, I'm leaving you. If you don't quit your job and find a new one so you can spend more time with me, I'm breaking up with you. If you don't spend more time with my family, I can't be with you. All of these are reasonable things. I'm not saying these aren't standards that aren't appropriate for you as a woman. You should want him to spend time with you, open up, commit, spend time with your family. Obviously, we both need to compromise if there's a conflict in desires, but those are all reasonable things. I'm just telling you that it does you no good to give him an ultimatum. Because again, even if he says, okay, I'll do those things, all you're doing is getting into a relationship where you're building up future resentment towards yourself. When you're dating, he's not leading you. Leadership in a relationship is for husbands, not boyfriends. You don't have to wait for him to be something he's not. You should live your life and hold to the standards you have. If he's not that guy, move on. He either meets your standards or doesn't. And if he does love you enough to change something in his life, he will do this without you giving him an ultimatum. As we talked about in point one, you should ask him for what you want. But again, if you need to twist his arm, this is just not a good idea. It's not gonna work. If he won't change without the ultimatum, he won't really change anyways. He might fake it and do what you want, but he'll only be able to fake it so long and eventually he will lash out at you for pushing him into something he doesn't want. So even if he gives into your ultimatum, you will just end up with a guy who resents you. And number four, never try to improve a good guy. Rather, allow him to improve himself through his association and relationship with you. We've all heard that saying, behind every successful man, there's a woman or a wife, right? And I like that phrase. And I think we all like that phrase because we know deep down that there's something a woman brings into a man's life that only she can bring. She brings immense value and it's a team effort in life. Even if he's like kind of getting the shine because he's out there in the world, it's a team effort when he's married to his wife. So all of that is true. But the problem with this idea is that we often think there's a woman pulling all the levers behind a good man, like he's really just a bumbling idiot. Because of our modern society's degradation of men, we find it easy to view successful men as puppets for even more successful women. The truth is, a wife brings a lot of value to a godly man's life but he's not dependent on her for everything. Like she's his counselor and personal life coach in all matters of business and social decisions. A good man wants a woman and a wife so that he can offer his masculine strength. He wants to enjoy her beauty. He's not going to her to find his masculine strength. Notice what Proverbs 31, 10 through 12 says of the Proverbs 31 woman. An excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. 
Clearly a good wife is a huge blessing to a good man, but she's not trying to change the man, improve the man, or micromanage the man. Rather, she is doing him good and not harm. Though it looks different, she's bringing just as much value to the relationship as him, but she's not improving the relationship by improving the man. Rather, she improves his life through her presence. Don't fall for the modern feminist lies that you are a man's advisor or that it's your job to make him better. Bring value to his life through improving yourself as a woman. The better you are, the better he will be through his relationship with you. If you want to attract a good godly man, then I talk about five really important biblical principles right here in this video. This video has been getting a lot of positive feedback, so I think you'll enjoy it. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com, and until next time, God bless.